BHP Group and Woodside Petroleum have entered into a commitment to combine their respective oil and gas portfolios by an all-stock merger and a move that will create one of the biggest independent energy companies by production in the world. And that's where we'll begin with Mike Henry, BHP's CEO. Mike, it's great to have you on such a, a big deal. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Uh, the materials uh, that the company put out talks a lot about the role of commodities in a decarbonizing world. Uh, can you talk about, in terms of the motivation for the deal, how decarbonization played a role? Okay, well, let, let, let me be clear that today's results and the number of strategic announcements we've made come off the back of a, you know, a great, great year. So we've uh, had record production at a number of our operations. That's allowed us to fully capitalize on the buoyant markets that we've had for, for a number of our commodities, uh, which then pulled through to a record dividend for the company, two, two U.S. dollars as a, a, per share as a final dividend. That's $10 billion, $15 billion for the full year, and it uh, means that over the past three years, we've returned $38 billion to, to shareholders. So the underlying business is running really, really well. The company's never been better positioned. But off the back of that, then, we have made some, you know, some, some significant uh, announcements that go to strategy and setting the company up for the future. One of those is the merger of our petroleum group with Woodside, uh, a, a, a Australian oil and gas company, and this is going to create a global top 10 independent E&P company that's going to be larger, more resilient, and better able to navigate the energy uh, transition. Now, what it also does is frees up more capital within the remaining BHP to deploy into those commodities that are most positively leveraged to the future and the big megatrends that are under, underway around us, including decarbonization, electrification, population growth, and rising living standards. And, and so we see those trends as driving really strong long-term demand for uh, the commodities that BHP produces. Um, but, you know, alongside that, then we've unlocked value for shareholders and created a more resilient oil and gas company, better able to navigate the, the coming energy transition. Right. Doesn't sound like you'd see those trends ending, ending anytime soon then. No, if anything, you know, the action that we've seen over the past 12 months has is, is seen an acceleration in some of those trends and it's given us real confidence around the strategy that we've laid out uh, previously because... Uh, We've seen a doubling down on climate commitments from a number of, uh, of nations around the world and companies, uh, including our, ourselves. We have a long track record in addressing climate change. I came out last September and spoke about some updated uh, uh, commitments and goals around uh, uh, decarbonization. All of those things are going to go towards driving even stronger demand for copper, nickel, potash, which was another big announcement we, did, we made today. And then even steel, which goes to demand for iron ore and higher quality coking coal, these are all going to benefit from the decarbonization thematic. Yeah, I want to get into the potash piece of this a, a little bit more in just a moment. But, Mike, um, first, you mentioned iron ore, record iron ore output. I mean, steel making and the ingredients that go into steel are still BHP's bread and butter. Um, more than double per ton for iron ore is, is what you earned here. Uh, how sustainable is that? What is your outlook for some of these commodity prices as we move into the second half of the year and beyond, especially given the fact that there are concerns about potential economic growth slowdown in China? Well, we, we've seen iron ore prices come off a little bit in, in recent weeks because of some uh, restrictions that have been put in place in China. But the underlying drivers of iron ore demand, so strong, uh, a strong economy in China, strong economic recovery, of course, in other uh, key markets as, as well, we're forecasting that that's going to, to continue on. So healthy demand uh, driven by a strong economy. There have been some supply side constraints, which, of course, over time will relax. So we, we do expect to see more supply coming out of, out of Brazil, maybe a little bit more out of, out of Australia. So we're not by any means predicting that the sorts of prices that we've seen for the past 12 months are going to be here forever. But for the time being, we do see you know, a, a, pr a pretty good um, outlook for iron ore demand and uh, healthy market or healthy dynamic for pricing.